Recently, I'd ranked up to level 1000 in GTA Online. In that time, I've made over $1.2 billion, spent over $740 million, played almost 300 hours, and killed almost 20,000 players. I've bought every business and property I could, owned around 300 vehicles, all the helicopters and planes I could ever want, and generally act like money is not an issue. So I wondered what it would be like to get rid of all of that wealth and start all over again. This is my journey on how I went from riches to rags. God, he's attractive, isn't he? Who the hell would want their character to look like that? That is a sexy man right there. Ladies, even though he's poor, I mean, look at him. What that shit do, you big old pimp, you? First thing I needed to do online was to win a race against Lamar. And of course, I'm going to go for the fastest and best car in the game, the Surge. Then of course, what happens after you complete a job in GTA Online? You get a loading screen. How long was this loading screen for? I timed it. Seven minutes. So after having to close down a game and restart it again, I eventually load in with Lamar. Yeah. He seems a bit confused as he's asking me about making some dairy products. You trying to make some cheese? Get that cheese. Oh no, it appears that someone has run off with Lamar's cheese, which is cleverly disguised under the code name of drugs here, presumably to prevent suspicion from the local cops. Uh -huh, this machine. I then have to deliver it to one of his friends, who by the looks of him also really likes cheese. Hey. Lamar, being the untrustworthy kind of guy that he is, asks me to check to see if Gerald has any other cheese hidden anywhere else. Maybe you can stick your hand up his ass. Yeah. Weirdly, I discover two packs of Red Leicester, three packs of Edam, and one pack of Camembert tightly pressed up inside Gerald's rectal cavity. Don't bother counting it. After eating the most disgusting sandwich ever made from my new bread and Gerald's arse cheese, I pass my next mission and earn a massive $500. And I'm now up to rank 3. Get in! Next up was a 2v2 last man standing. Little did they know that I was already a legit badass. So after my teammate, who was actually a potato, got fried, it became a 2v1. But that became a 1v1 after one of them blew themselves up because noob. He was so annoyed at blowing himself up, they actually blamed it on the game and gave it a down vote. Now me and Lamar are best buddies after the whole cheese fiasco, he now texts me and calls me all the time. I also managed to spot a celebrity in the form of the UFC star, John Jones, with another DUI. John Jones then got annoyed at me for watching him crash his car while drunk and then began to attack me with a lamppost. He then tried some intimidation tactics by driving right up to me before doing what he's known best for, a hit and run. Obviously, he didn't recognise me as GTA Casino Heist record holder and certified rank 1000 and he duly paid the price after I stole his car, punched him to death, then did what any self-respecting social justice warrior would do, dump his car into the sea. The apartment came with a free bottomless bottle of wine, which when drank from turned the apartment into some wobbly fun house, and a bong that you could smoke on until your eyes bled. Money well spent I'd say. Now I'm on my way to see Lester. I was wondering when you'd show up. The first time I met him had me really confused as I couldn't understand why he'd want to put a coconut flavoured chocolate bar on someone. And if anybody gets particularly fresh just give me a shout, I can put a bounty on them. I thought it was funny. Okay. But to his credit, he did have the renowned group sex finger on his wall, who then proceeds to do his best Louis C.K. impression. Maybe. Just maybe you are. But maybe. Maybe. But maybe. Maybe. Ready to do real work. All right. We might be ready to move on this thing. If you want the work, you'll get a knock on your door any minute. Go on a treasure hunt which involved reading, stare at a shovel with some red paint on it, Stare at an empty box, stare at a naked man before shooting him up the arse, collect a shitty old gun from some dead people, 
murder a bunch of innocent people by shooting them in the head for a quarter of a million dollars, and of course shoot at this guy's porno mags. In order to be rewarded with another $250,000, I had to complete another task, which was, of course, to murder a load more people. And run Lester over, because it's funny too. The second setup for this heist was pure genius. We had to use my friend's black armoured Karuma to rob some very dangerous criminals of their black armoured Karuma. So we could use the black armoured Karuma to rob a bank. Lester clearly didn't recognise me in my amazing disguise as he thought I was losing my heist virginity. Ah, <laughs> you're uh, your first time. First time. But like I said, it is your first time, so... Uh, but somehow we did seem to know a lot so about my are, actual uh, social life. Wild, mm, insane, mind-blowing orgies, orgies! <laughs> the best thing to do here was to put on my impotent rage mask while driving. Not only would this save a second or two in time, but it would mean that I would be completely unrecognisable when robbing the bank. Unfortunately, I didn't realise that putting on a simple mask would somehow remove my entire disguise and I changed into an outfit that made me look like your alcoholic uncle. But luckily, I did still have my mask on so absolutely no one would recognise me. Now it was time to meet everyone's favourite psychopath and permanent pervert, Trevor. However, Ron must be a total genius as he saw through my clever disguise immediately. Hey! This is... that person! With the cat now out of the bag, I then told Trevor about a spot on my bum cheek. Oh, I'm getting a semi. Uh. Trevor then told me about why his ass was so sore and was upset after recognising me from one of the earlier orgies while he was dressed as a woman. You have been fucking me! Bang, 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 huh? Bang, bang! Into the room. I then asked Trevor what he thinks about GTA YouTuber The Professional's videos. I am not fucking interested! I asked my friend Dark Eclipse if I could borrow his bike. As usual, he was late, but he does insist on making an impact, this time by jumping out of a jet and splatting on the road in front of me. Michael's fat bastard son Jimmy was hired by Lester despite never even consulting me, you know, the new owner of the property. Jimmy, being annoying dumbass that he is, couldn't understand why he had to start sweeping up as a form of exercise in order to lose three stone by the end of the year, before I was surprisingly interrupted by another fatty. Jimmy, everyone has to start somewhere. I, I know, I know. After being rudely interrupted by some Asian bitch, we got talking and I invited her and Lester along to one of my next orgies. Uh, sure. Come back to my hotel. After arriving back at my arcade with my new heist prep equipment, I overheard Jimmy talking about his new Viagra tablets. It's not working. These dumbass pieces of shit. And then about how his new electroshock nipple clamps not working. Are they plugged in? <laughs> oh. All this Viagra and nipple clamp talk got Lester really excited. Coming! With Lester also trying out Jimmy's Viagra tablets, he was now confident of making the most of the orgy with the Asian bitch and her friends. By the time I'm done, I will do them all. You remember Miss Chang? Call me Asian bitch! Lester then set out explaining just how easy it would be to rob a casino five times a night for the next six months. Still pumped full of Viagra and horny as hell, Lester spilled our backup plan if it wasn't going so well at tonight's orgy with the Asian bitch. You're going to transition to the more aggressive approach and you keep on pushing. It's amazing. If only we could keep on doing it. Yes, but let's start by just doing it once. Before getting to work on my first approach, I decided it would help me concentrate by first rubbing a small mouse against the planning board. Scoping at the casino also gave me the opportunity to unlock the most annoying, pointless and worst character to ever appear in GTA in the form of this bellend, Young Ancestor. Oh, this party fucking sucks! Yeah, this sucks! Listen yeah, up, everybody. At the party, my penthouse, right now. What? Who coming? I'm coming, bro. Uh, her, 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 her. He's with her, I guess. Him, her, her. Definitely not you. Ah, what's that look like? The green stuff, huh? Yeah, it's too much currency, so we'll still need to launder it through a buyer. I did wonder what must be in those green boxes that must be so expensive as to risk life, limb, or certain imprisonment if we got caught. Okay, now that we know what we're stealing, it's time to choose how to steal it. 
before I went out to collect all of the heist prep equipment, Lester told me about his time working with monkeys at air conditioning manufacturers. I've seen a lot of shit, had a lot of fans in my day. For the next prep mission, I had to choose from four sets of cars. There was this heap of crap, this pile of junk, this load of cat, and these, which were pretty good. I had to sneak into their compound without them knowing I was there, which was really easy as the guard patrolling was not only extremely short-sighted, but also incredibly deaf. I had to locate the guard and take him out as quietly as possible. Then give him a quick massage as if he were Jeffrey Epstein and I was a 14 year old girl. For this mission, I had to blow up this guy, 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 this guy. And this guy. Oh God, there it is! There it is, people! There! And for the last prep mission, I had to collect a boring machine. What's your problem, you man? Idiot? Which was a bit unfair, as I didn't think it looked boring at all. And to be honest, the only reason I did this mission was so I could make that amazing joke. All ready to go, I was a bit concerned that Lester wasn't taking this very seriously, as he was dressed up like Craig David. Ooh, hoo, 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 looking good, Uncle Lester. Why were you creeping round me, Because if there is one thing that I just love screwing more than a casino, it is a Asian bitch. Yeah! It all started off brilliantly, as you can tell by Sanchi's driving. It aggravates my hives. It's uh, the calm before the storm. Running through contingencies and backup plans. He then made sure we got our 5,000 steps done for the day by parking half a mile away from the large yellow dot on the screen. Okay, now you're one well-placed explosive away from walking right. That's the entrance. Follow the tunnel. It'll take you right down until you're on the same level as the vault. Once inside, I was shocked to find that we were not stealing any green stuff, but actually some cash, which was quite clearly white. I really don't know how Lester could have got this so wrong. Once we had completed the invisible hurdles, we had to murder a bunch more people, ensuring that the world's orphan population levels were as high as ever. And Lester still took some time out to give me some more advice concerning the orgy later. Don't relax once you've made it to the top of the shaft. After briefly trying to lose the cops by disguising myself as a bush, we then made our way up the LSPD building. Oh! Oh! Get to the chopper! After a seamless landing, We delivered the cash to the buyer, who then paid us in cash for stealing the cash. Fill me in. Ah, you're here, you're here. Got some for me. During this important cutscene, Dark Eclipse tried his best to photobomb it all, like he was some kid that wanted to get noticed in one of my live streams. We couldn't approach it the same way, they'll be expecting that, but uh, we come at it. From a new direction. You're a very resourceful man, Mr. Crest. And here I was, thinking that I was retired. If that wasn't bad enough, Sanchi then joined in. Anything left to give. How about now? And then the moment we've all been waiting for. How did you hack my cell phone? <laughs> You're going to have to work harder for that. It was now time to invest in a bunker. I opted for the chum ass bunker. Now it was time to meet Agent 47. We simply couldn't wait to be in the next episode of Riches to Rags. Hey, hey, hurry the fuck up! Bunny! It's really lovely to meet you. Ah, Mr. Exit. Just give me a sec. Should have just reversed.
You want to make real money? Dirty little secret for you. It's in arms. Agent 47 refused to help me out until I'd given in some man love. Is there a room in the back or something? 47 was so happy about appearing in this episode of Riches to Rags that he started to tell my teammates all about me. Exceedingly vain and self-absorbed man, brilliant at everything he does, yada yada yada, makes you want to puke. The mission was simple, call up the cops to attend our location without any information as to why. Hello, this is 911, what emergency service do you require? Then run over a random fat chick. Pesca, who has the listening skills of a doorstop, rejected my advice for me to drive the police car, which then led to this hilarity. You can't turn up at the station while you're wanted by the police. Unless you're turning yourself in, that is. Who's the cops? Eventually realizing that women really can't drive, she finally gave up and let me take the wheel. You're clear. Now, go into the station and come out with the hard copy. All that was left was for us to destroy the evidence, which wouldn't be too hard as Pesca had already destroyed most of it with her driving. Pesca, not happy with what I'd said, tried to prove herself by grabbing hold of the steering wheel and causing this to happen. After killing so many people thus far, I wondered what we'd have to do this time. Yes, it's a killing, but no, it's nothing immoral at all. As usual with 47, he then had a message for all the fanboys of The Professional after the hilarious videos I made about him. Extremely rich, extremely paranoid, and extremely horrible. Don't cry for this guy, no one else will. To calm my nerves, I thought I'd have a glass or two of whiskey, but ended up getting absolutely wasted. But luckily, accessing the planning board sobered me right up. Before we got started, we played a game of charades, where 47 acted out his favourite terrorist attack. With crew roles arranged, all we had to do now was wait for Dio to find his car. Once they had hit their checkpoint, it was now my job to get everyone else to say hello to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend! Now, just as long as nobody went for their dinner and let their character jump into the sea to their death... Fricks. Fricks. He died. How the f***? How the f*** did you die there? My next brilliant idea was to try out the arena was as it was triple money. My plan was simple, sit up here until I had to jump off and escape. another bunker selling mission, my funds were looking good. So good in fact that Jesus cleared a space for me in heaven by first throwing someone else out. We're in it was now time to rob the casino again. Artwork, nice. Not really my taste, but assets are still going crazy and we can make a small fortune. Come back when you're ready. I was stunned to see that one way of robbing the casino was group sex, but then I remembered that this was Lester's plan, so it all made sense really. Junus kindly lent me his mark to oppressor, which was the least he could do really. Can I have a B in the chat for Boo Kinnear? <laughs> Wait, pick me up. Whoa, are you for real? 
He just absolutely flattened me. And it's over. That's it. That's it. It's, it's over. He just smashed me to pieces with the f***ing vigilante. Oh, f*** it out, Judy! Seeing as we didn't want to alert anyone, especially the cops, I made sure that I drove with extreme caution. Uh, only, I don't have kids, just some uh, pretty basic AI experiments that swear at me in Russia and want to destroy the world. <laughs> you know, we all love it our own ways. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, let's rob this thing. Okay, you're there. Drive in past the garage entrance and follow the road to the racetrack. You are private security, like a cop who couldn't pass the fitness test or the psyche eval. Now play it cool, you're doing your usual day-to-day -day delivery job. Once inside the casino, we played it cool, ensuring we'd not make any of the security suspicious. You're earlier than expected. This gonna check your visa number? Chip delivery, huh? Uh, sure, but go straight through and leave her on the left. You can take the elevator or stairs down to the vault. As always, the fastest way through the man trap was to jump. Jump around. Jump around. We then had to face the toughest opponent of all, the casino end level boss. There. <laughs> it might seem crazy what I'm about to say. My favourite piece of art was this man woman, who I believe is Abby from The Last of Us Part 2. Time to change your outfits. We need a fresh start. It was at this moment that William knew. He fucked up. You're gonna make it out of here under the radar. Thinking that it was now time for our group sex, Dark and I changed into our stripper outfits. As long as you stay calm, those outfits should get you from here to the exit. We were then joined by some other strippers, this time dressed as armed police. Filled with excitement, we ran towards them before we realised that these are not actually strippers, but in fact Noose out to kill us for robbing the casino. Hey, hey! Uh, yeah, hey, hey! on the coop, yeah, yeah, yeah! Always with killers, man, because the Lord of the shoot, yeah, yeah, yeah! Still love is a person, some demons don't know what you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did them see some seats, mommy, you never knew, yeah, yeah. Hello, people. Unfortunately for us, Agent 14 had eaten a rather spicy curry the night before. So there's this chemical laboratory called Humane Labs. As usual with Agent 14, he spent no time having a little rant about someone. This time, it was Donald Trump. Well, he's a warmongering right-wing douche with all the subtlety of a red dildo. I had to admit, I was rather impressed with how he could concentrate on his talk while simultaneously filling his pants at the same time. Red dildos. <laughs> Whatever. Eventually, Agent 14 finally admitted to where the sound and smell was coming from. That shithole. <laughs> That's what the intel seems to suggest. What I got told on the streets, and what my boss, who doesn't want you to know his name, will pay you to discover because what? Don't worry about the why, just worry about the how. First, got a couple things to take care of. We then had to amuse ourselves before our secret contact arrived in broad daylight in the middle of a busy car park. When our contact did finally arrive, I thought she must be driving her selfie, judging by what we witnessed. <laughs> You here for the access codes? It was then that I remembered where I'd seen this woman before, and her fondness for flashlights. Next I'll have this thing so far up your ass, your tonsils will be playing shadow puppets. <laughs> you think you're impenetrable? See how you feel when this is 18 inches deep inside. Get the lube. Actually, fuck the lube. Let's dry dock him. The FIB, what are these clowns doing here? Shit! For our next mission, all Pesca had to do was to get into the car, but she's a woman, and always late. Okay, let's get these armored vehicles, get down to Davis Quartz.
Literally minutes after just speaking with him, who we have now nicknamed Agent Farteen, he called us back to the planning room to tell us about our next mission. An EMP. They're not going to mind. The thing is kept on a plane, the plane is kept on a boat, the boat is kept in the ocean. All very simple, just borrowing something off the government, like a library. All right, great, good, call me. After making our way to the dinghy and admiring Pesca's parking, we sailed off to steal ourselves a jet. We're moving on to phase Once we're done with that, we'll go back to your place, get started on that thing I know nothing about. Details are on your board. You're bored at the apartment. Go! Our final setup saw us sneaking into the humane lab to drop off the EMP. It was important that we were not spotted or else we'd fail, so I made sure to wear the appropriate clothing. Oh yes, and while Pesco tried her best to blow it all, literally, by setting fire to this petrol tank. Which then exploded and destroyed our getaway vehicle. This then meant that all four of us had to run out of the Humane Labs. So we were clear to finally pass the setup. Knowing that Agent Fartine was here, I tried my best to waft the smell away with the door. So we're good to go, I think. You've done great, and this won't be a problem. No one is going to want to admit that anything happened here. It's just going to require a little bit of finesse. Two teams, chopper crew, ground crew, all of you will be flying in together. Are we clear? So remember, if we never meet again, we never met at all. I love you all, which is why it's best we pretend that nothing happened. And if it did happen, it wasn't me, and it wasn't me because I was never here. Stay strong. Love ya. And that's how we don't get caught doing naughty things. Of course, Pesca was her usual self. Then something happened that has never happened before in all the hundreds of times I've completed this heist. Both Dark and I were thrown out of the chopper and cut to pieces by our own blades, putting an end to my criminal mastermind and a $12 million bonus. Then, for some reason, the flashlight bitch made us blow up the chopper. Pesca opted to do it, as she's already shown her skills in making things explode. You need to hack the security panel. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They blow things up and then walk away. Thinking that a jet propelled flying car with homing missiles would really help me out with these missions, I soon discovered that this probably won't be true. To locate the signal, I had to change my gender on a whim, as you're allowed to do that now, and become a woman so I could access the women's toilets and maybe even get to see some beaver. Time to have some fun! <laughs> I did get some major insight into what it's like in these ladies' toilets and what they get up to. Things like looking at a logo on their phones, or staring at themselves in the mirror. Seeing as we'd already had cash and then artwork, I'm pretty sure we all knew what would be next. You guessed it. Artwork again. Artwork. You must be a little late to the party. I should go ask them nicely where they stash the guns. So 
So after expertly parking my car in the water, I was perfectly positioned for a one-man ambush. I collected the first two without any issues, but the third one saw me running around like a human torch. Things then went from bad to worse when I was trying to get rid of the police choppers as my buzzard was starting to die. They then went from worse to even worse -ra -ra -ra, when my drone parts were high up on these stilt houses that I simply didn't have the vehicles to be able to reach them. So after putting my head through this wall, I did what any self-respecting GTA player would do in my position. Rage quit. To help me out with these preps, I called on a good friend. Who, to my surprise, actually turned out to be a young Tom Jones. It's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Now normally you'd beep your horn before you run someone over, but not this guy. So I killed him and stole his car. So after groping the arse of this dead body, we then had to sneak into the FIB building, which meant picking up this case with my knee, and then sneaking out so nobody would know that we were ever there. We then had to finish the drone mission. I opted for the scramjet, hoping for better luck than I had with the buzzard. With our sneaking suits keeping our footsteps quiet, we did our best not to make any noise for fear of alerting the guards. The good news is, they have no idea who or how. No. <laughs> the cops are on their way. Ignoring Lester completely, I carried on making the guards continue singing their opera songs. Still keeping it silent but violent, I killed a news officer like I was Bruce Lee. They have patrols and all the civilians have been evacuated. They relegged it to steal a car for posh English tar. Christ! It was squeaky bum time at the ledge of death. And as always, we arrived in style to drop off our stolen artwork. One business which is sure to always make money is a nightclub. I mean, it's not like there will ever be a worldwide pandemic where everything shuts down for six months or anything like that. Give me a fucking spotlight, Tony. Your friend's here. Piss off, Laszlo. After getting to know Tony, it didn't take long before he started telling me about his favorite hobbies. I stare into the mirror and beat off like a real man. I did, however, get worried when he told me about his plans for his human trafficking idea. We need kids, young people, whoever's gonna bring the party, and we need them wasted, and we need them dancing! Tony then went on to tell me what he hates most about Facebook and Instagram. Selfies with some fuckwits! Despite the dickhead's protest, You're a dick! Tony put him straight on who were the best looking, most charismatic, and most importantly, funniest people to ever appear in GTA. Me and him! I was getting even more suspicious when Tony started telling me about his bumhole. You can do whatever you want down here. Literally, whatever you want. Gorgeous space, plenty of room. Despite just meeting, Dave wasted no time trying to put his face into my crotch. Born love. Nice back? Ah, oh, no, thanks. The twat then made it quite clear that he didn't want it to appeal to my good friends Gerald and Lamar. Great music, great crowd, 
and no cheese. So while the twat sourced us a DJ, I had to source us a big sound system. So I stole one from some college kids and whacked in which is probably the greatest instrumental ever made. It turns out that our DJ's grey haired pilot became very sick and passed out which is totally original and wasn't stolen from the classic film Airplane at all. Pilot, poor bastard, is reduced to a quivering, wasted piece of jelly. Whoa! Sir, that's not making me very proud! I was stunned to find out that our new DJ was none other than former WWF superstar Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> So after realising that all of the nightclub's management were men who like to hug each other and put their faces into crotches, it suddenly dawned on me that this was not your ordinary nightclub, but in fact a massive gay nightclub. I had just 2 minutes and 40 seconds to collect 30 checkpoints from around the map. I had failed here, 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 gave up here, got a silver here, was just 3 seconds out here, died here, as well as here, 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 and finally gave up after dying here. So I took myself shopping and got some minor restyling. Now with my great new look and my awesome new pink car, I then attempted to promote the club by befriending some of the local LGBTQ and other alphabet people of San Andreas. Hey Carlo, how you doing? There's something deeply noble about growing your own vegetables. But it didn't quite go to plan as he took offence when I said that men can't have periods. I had heard a rumour that there were going to be diamonds in the vault at some point, so not wanting green stuff, which is clearly white, I rang Lester to tell him to cancel the whole thing. How can I be of service? When I spent another 25k on a setup, I magically got diamonds in the vault. I definitely didn't know this was possible, or made a video about how to change the vault contents to diamonds, or left a link in the description. Remember this guy? Alright, alright. Nice to meet you too. Kind of casino, okay? You better be serious about this shit. Cause I can get you wherever you need to be to ride this place. No one says no to your SS. The annoying rapper dude kept ringing me all the bloody time telling me to take it somewhere else. You got the car yet? Just get it away from the hotel. Like, get rid of it. But like, I don't know, just drop it into some water. And take it. Take it. Fuck! Look, you hear that? Heavyweight it's bang! bang. So after 20 minutes of driving around the city, we eventually had to drop the car off at the altruist camp. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. So we kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, kick, push, coast. I thought Shy Jurex would be smart enough to use his own vehicle to drive us around in, but he's not, as I later found out that he stole this bike off the street, but with myself and his fat ass on it, it took us forever to get around.
things then went from bad to worse. Seeing that my car was on fire, I knew I had to bail before it was too late. Okay, it was nearly the greatest escape in the history of GTA Online. Worn out and needing a break, I sat down to see if there's anything good on YouTube this week. Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? Today guys, what we're gonna do- after all that, I realised that being murdered time and time again really wasn't so bad after all. To be honest, with driving like that, we were going to end up at the morgue one way or another. Being such a master at stealth, this next prep would be a breeze. Seeing as it didn't quite go to plan, I was glad I had backup from Shy Durex in a buzzard, who surely wouldn't be dumb enough to start blowing everything up. When we arrived, the secretary, unlike all the men at my gay nightclub, let us know that she wasn't such a big fan of bump fun. I can let them into the office, but not into the back. I promise you there is nothing interesting back there. But young Ancestor was quick to point out what he likes doing. Fucking asshole! He then quickly realised that he'd probably confessed too much. Despite confessing his homosexuality, Young just wasn't into buff white dudes. Don't touch me! Get the fucking thing off the fucking table and get out of here! So after we collected the fucking thing off the fucking table, we went off to sell ourselves some diamonds. Even though we were on a very important job, Shai Jurix does get very horny and even tried to honour the bottom of the stairs. Relaxing? <laughs> For a moment, I didn't think you were gonna get back there. Diamonds! Diamonds are forever. Throw your diamonds in the sky if you feel the vibe. Keep moving and keep quiet. <laughs> hey! Yeah! We escaped with the diamonds clean, and all that was left was for Juritz to show that his landing skills are just as good as his driving skills. All that was left for the day was to see if I could win this week's podium vehicle. Ah, uh, not this time. If I were to keep earning money from the gays and the alphabet people, I knew I'd need a new DJ. I had a choice of this chubby rug muncher, these two bum bandits, or the anorexic who like junk food songs. So the choice was pretty obvious. Not only did he have the best music, but his name was Dicks On. I was already getting a bit worried with the twat's behaviour, but now also realising that Dixon is in fact Norman Bates. I couldn't let them get away with stealing a schoolboy's rucksack, so I chased them down and asked them politely if they would return it. Now I just had to take Dix on to our nightclub while listening to his and the twat's highly intellectual conversations. Look at this! Bags are in the taco already! Thanks, yeah. As soon as we arrived back at the nightclub, I thought it would be a great time to try out this car's ejector seat. Just chillin', you know. What about you? I have to admit that despite being a total weirdo, he did bring a whole new sound, and the crowd absolutely loved it. Even though we're getting money, you could give me some all. With the cars in the big crib, give me some all. Can you believe it? We own this place. 
Yo! I'm out. This new place turned out to be an old biker clubhouse with loads of activities I'd never want to do. Darts. Juke. Arm wrestling table. While showing me around, Malk told me about how he collects his own poo and files it in size order. Hey, it's good to keep shit organised. After telling Malk about how I owned a gay nightclub, he offered up his own ass to me. And you can take it if you want it. Despite looking like a crack den, I actually quite like this place. I mean, it had boobs, 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 a stepladder, boobs, 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 this miserable old bitch. What's it gonna be? And a laptop. The laptop got me onto the black market to buy illegal businesses like weed, counterfeit cash, meth, cocaine, and the grinder's wet dream document forgery business. Hello, YouTube. Being a fashion guru, I got myself some double denim, some lovely new boots, and a new haircut and beard, which definitely didn't make me look gay anymore. So while I waited, I thought I'd go and complete some stunt jumps. And here are the highlights. With 48 stunt jumps completed, I then gave up. To my surprise and delight, it was filled with hot chicks in her underwear, but also this wrinkly old man in his underwear. Bacon soda! I got bacon soda! Ah, you ready to settle this the old fashioned way? For this one, I had to just go and beat some bikers up, and with Dark Eclipse helping me out, this would be really easy. Eventually, we did finally beat them, and we got a few extra kicks in just to be sure. It's always good to have friends in high places. Friends who know that you're a three-time casino heist record holder on your other account, and need your help stealing from the vault. It was all going so well, but then I remembered that I was playing with Dark Eclipse. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. With my new money, I thought it'd be a good idea to invest in some motorbikes to store in my new MC clubhouse. I bought the Batty 801RR, the Sanchez 2, the LCC Hexa, and I thought to go all out and splash some money on the best bike in the game, the Fagio. They see me rolling, they hate it. Do you remember this guy? Well, not being too pleased with being a condom in the last episode, he had now changed his name to Fonzon Ian. It didn't really matter though, as condom or not, I still had my dick in him and he got absolutely f***ed. So 
So after winning pretty much everything, I sent Fonzon Ian a message to say well played and thanks for being such a good sport. But as he was now my arch enemy, the reply I got back wasn't as polite as mine. Find what's in that vault and sniff around for whatever else they have tucked away down there. You might find something we can use to our advantage. Gold Always believe in your soul. I then took on this tryhard at a game of tennis. After a slow start, I soon got the hang of it and started kicking his ass. And after my four straight wins, he did what all tryhards do when someone beats them. He left. I then gave punching homeless women a go. I then got a surprise visitor. Hi there! <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome! So glad you could make it. <sighs> Trevor Phillips Industries! I am not... A pusher. <sighs> Sounded good so far, but I was too focused on how Trevor could say these words while his mouth clearly said something totally different. We will be borrowing a couple bricks of cocaine from some juiced up frat boys on a yacht off the coast. The team for this heist was goth rock wannabe Dio, expert driver Pesca, and this gay porn star Fist Al. I don't know what it is, but since I've become famous, lots of people see me as a religious figure. Jesus! But seeing as they were religious, I sent them all to see their maker. When we arrived at the lost camp, Pesca went in like a bull in a china shop and ruined the mission because that's what Pesca does. Don't rush it! Whatever you do! I think Pesca alerting everyone may have been because of this giant yellow gun that she was using. Probably not the best for a stealth mission. After delivering what we thought were drugs, I mean, we found out it was just a portable blue toilet for Ron. I don't shit on my doorstep unless Trevor tells me to, but that was only once. What I'm trying to say is that I only rarely shit on doorsteps. When we arrived back at the apartment to talk to Ron about our next mission, he told us all about Dweeby GT clickbaiter, Mr. Boss for the win. He suffered a lot. He's not the horrific, bloodthirsty maniac that we all imagine he is. Well, well he is, but... He's got a gentler side. He loves his mother, who likes animals and children. Anyway, after this, we'll all be rich, and you can get to know him better. Eventually, Ron told us what we needed to retrieve for Trevor's okay. new garden he was having built. So you're going to the lumberyard in Paletto Forest to pick up some grass. Now, it's a whole lot of grass, and it's well protected. Myself and Dio had arrived and already killed half the enemies. But because Pesca was driving, her and Fist Owl didn't make it in time, and... So we restarted and respawned without our cars. Yeah, thanks guys. When we picked up the trucks, our gun team of Pesca and Fistow, of course, decided not to protect us and just drive on the train tracks, leaving me to kill everyone by myself. Because the gun protection team was so rubbish, even Trevor advised me on what I should do for the next heist. Check your friends list. But we finally managed to drop off Trevor's lawn. that grass like 10 minutes ago. Ron was so happy with the grass that he couldn't help but tell us what he was going to do next. Masturbate till dawn. For our last setup, we had to murder a load of O'Neill brothers before stealing their tanker. I then spotted this on the map and said to everyone, Right, there are two enemies right next to the tanker, so don't use any missiles. Then you can guess what happened next. Thanks, Pesca. Introducing brand new merch from Beatsdown Gaming. For just £99.99, .99, you can own a Thanks Pesca t shirt or a Dark Eclipse Night t shirt. They come in a range of sizes from Skinny Dweeb Brophy 1322 to Fat Bastard. Order now as limited stock available. Advertisement number two. Despite doing this mission before and me telling him again where to go, Fist Al still managed to go the wrong way. I then advised him to go slow around this corner. And then said the same thing to Pesca. Doesn't matter. Maybe Ron doesn't need to know if this is gone. Here is what I promised you. 
To be honest, I wasn't very pleased that our pay was a bag full of Trevor's used wank tissue, but Fistow was, and he said he would sniff them in his next movie. Now let's get the hell out of here. Out of nowhere, someone claiming to be Trevor's long lost relative arrived. My brother. <laughs> yo, yo, it's Phil. Considering that they look nothing alike, Phil told him that all his relations have birthmarks on their willies. Yeah, I have them. Good. Can I see? Not wanting to get his willy out in public, Phil showed Trevor a picture of his willy from his suitcase. Mm. 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 All right. We're gonna have a circle jerk. Now if their willy's proven, Phil told Trevor all about their mum being a filthy whore. Excuse me? <clears throat> why, why do you keep saying that? Hmm? Now fearing for his life, Phil called the cops, so Trevor threw his Viagra pills at him. Two, eight, five, six. With the cops being American, they started randomly shooting everywhere. Fuck you! Lester got word that this was one of the worst high screws ever and rang me to talk about working with these noobs. You can predict that they'll always go wrong. <laughs> you should stick to working with professionals for a while. Have you ever had one of those friends who is a twat and tries to ruin your game experience? Well, I did. After completing a nightclub cellar mission, this arsehole then shut out my tyres. And then I invited him again to help me sell my bunker stock. But it turns out that he was just an utter moron as he tried to get a mine surgeon instead of the free one, which is massive and even shows up on the map. Just after myself and Hackerboy finished off Merryweather, I went to grab some quick ammo. What? So while I had my back turned and was picking up some supplies, this guy did this. Oh, sorry about the smell. It's building out of my ear urine. Eat a dick, you shit! Surprisingly, this was the first time another player had killed me, which meant I got to meet this guy from Death Stranding. Not being the type of person that puts up with trolling arseholes, I then told him he was a knob and then blocked him. And nobody ever heard from him again. I also had to win some land races and get some slipstreams, so I created my own racetrack in the shape of a penis and called it Ha Ha A Willy. I then met who must be the coolest man ever during a violent robbery. Ah! Oh! And his name is John C. As it was now getting late, I took a short break to see what was on YouTube this week. Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have another top 5 video for you guys on GT Online. And this one was a pretty heavily requested one, which was top 5 sandals. <laughs> so at number 5 we have these brown leather ones. Now needing cheering up, I took my new terabyte drone out for a spin. I then saw this guy griefing, so I introduced him to Drake. They go right for up. And do you remember this song? <laughs> Not happy with my choice of music, he then tried to escape in a jet. But I still had to take on the end level boss of stunt jumps, the lighthouse. This is Morse Mutual Insurance. I can do that. Morse Mutual, how can I be of service? I'll look into it. So after completing the 5 client jobs and Rockstar giving me my monthly 1 million dollars I could finally afford the Oppressor Mark II. I killed this guy who was just minding his own business Blew up this dude who was on a normal Oppressor Pah noob Took out 
this guy who clearly sucks in a jet. There was this guy with a bounty. And this guy without a bounty. All this killing without any real skill or effort sure was fun, but I just couldn't help but think that there was just something missing. Now dressed as a fully fledged tryhard, I went on a real rampage. I didn't care who you were, I was going to kill you. I killed this red guy. This white guy. This purple dude. This blue dude. These two guys at the same time. This blue guy I killed before, but now with a bounty. This other tryhard in his Mark II, who'd rather kill himself than have me do it. And this guy just minded his own business driving his new car. It was sure becoming expensive being a tryhard, and even worse than that, it somehow made my penis absolutely tiny. And then took on the double money events for this week, Survival. I was joined by You Are Bad, Vajirt9i, and the dyslexic Scaby Penuts, who was clearly a big fan of Richard's rags as he had the emblem on his t-shirt. Ironically, the guy called You Are Bad died immediately. Proof that you should never give yourself a shitty trolling name, especially if you can't back it up. Now humiliated at being so awful, he then left. With this truck in my firing line, I thought to throw a sticky bomb on it and explode it to move it out of the way. And the NPC has never said a truer sentence. Look at that dipshit! Which brings us nicely on to the top 5 NPC insults. Number 5. You are a piece of shit. Number 4. Fuck no! Number 3. Get the fuck on now! Number two. Why don't you go on back to your wussy daddy? Number one. Look at that dipshit! For the next survival, I had two cars helping me out in the form of Uphill Auto, a Volvo, and deceased rap legend Biggie. But then he left. With the superpowers granted to me from the tryhard outfit, I completed the survival. And to finish the day, I had a nice warm shower to wash all the blood, guts and stench from your mum off my hairy back sack and crack. <laughs> and that concludes the best of Richest to Rags, the greatest GTA series that nobody watched.